Hello, I'm Steve Robbins, board chair and managing partner of Lurch Early and Brewer, and chair of the Public Safety Awards Selection Committee. The Selection Committee is comprised of all five of our public safety chiefs, their deputies and lieutenants, and private sector organizations that sit on the Chamber's Board of Directors. During our committee meetings, we watch body camera videos, review news footage, see photos, and hear the often terrifying details of the nominated public safety events. For over 20 years, I have served in this role, which has allowed me to gain an intimate understanding of our public safety community and has allowed me to personally thank these local heroes. It is a very rewarding and humbling role, and the end product is truly remarkable. This is our fourth broadcast of the Public Safety Awards, and they just keep getting better every year. While this is the fourth year of live streaming the Public Safety Awards, this is the 49th year of the Chamber hosting this event. For 49 years, we have celebrated public safety personnel and the organizations that support them. For 49 years, the business community has said, thank you for helping to keep our community safe. And for 49 years, there has been one person who has served on every single Public Safety Awards Selection Committee, spending countless hours putting together certificates, ordering medals, and most importantly, advocating on behalf of these heroic public servants. That person is Marcine Goodlow, the first woman to serve as president of the Montgomery County Volunteer Rescue Service, and the only person to serve on the Chamber's Selection Committee for the entirety of this impactful program. Marcine's contribution to this event is innumerable, and the determination and care that she puts into this program each year is why this event continues to be one of the largest of its kind in this region. On behalf of the entire Public Safety Awards Selection Committee, thank you, Marcine, for dedicating so much of your time and resources to help make all 49 years of the Public Safety Awards a success. And on a personal note, I also want to thank you for embracing me for all the years that I've worked on this program. I appreciate your support so much. With that, I invite you to sit back and watch our local heroes go above and beyond to keep our community safe. Thank you to our public safety agencies and their partners. And thank you for joining us today. No officer starts their workday with the intent of taking another's life. At the same time, no police officer wishes to lose their life at the hands of a violent suspect. But a November 2020 workday shattered all normalcy. The Montgomery County Police Department's Repeat Offender Unit, or ROU, learned a Florida man suspected of murdering his estranged girlfriend in the presence of her six kids was headed to the Greyhound Bus Depot in Silver Spring, Maryland. His cousin was planning to pick him up the ROU went to work. These guys go after the worst of the worst. Sergeant Steve Austin, a canine officer from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, teamed up with the ROU that day as their regular canine was injured. Together, they worked to identify the suspect and stopped him in the parking lot of an apartment complex in Laurel, Maryland. We felt that this was a safe spot that, um, that the apprehension of the suspect could, could begin and we could perform that and successfully take the person into custody and take him to jail. Things changed quickly. The suspect fired his gun, shooting one of the detectives in the chest. So at first I didn't know that he had he had particularly been shot because the gunshot was so muffled from being inside of the vehicle, it was hard to tell what it was at first. Austin started emergency care for the detective. So at that time I started working um, uh, the, the trauma medical aspect that we're trained to do. I was able to call for uh, one of the detectives to bring me a, a trauma kit and were able to apply um, uh, chest seals to help prevent um, tension pneumothorax or sucking chest wound as it's known on the detective and kind of keep keep him uh, as comfortable as possible until we could get um, the EMS there to come and um, take him to a trauma center. Other ROU detectives followed the fleeing shooter into the woods. As the suspect pointed his gun at them, they fired. <laughs> he died of his injuries. Meanwhile, a helicopter arrived to evacuate the critically injured detective. His life-threatening injuries led to three immediate emergency surgeries. Every organ but his heart was damaged in some way. 
Yet after weeks in the hospital and months of physical therapy, the brave detective returned to his job. His life was saved. He's, uh, he's back at work today. An investigation showed the detective's actions were justified. Their jobs are so dangerous. With such a need for anonymity, we can't show their faces. The repeat offenders unit, they, um, these guys are definitely probably one of the best uh, professional organizations I've seen that, that uh, really do go after the worst offenders that we have in the, in the county. But we recognize their unit, the repeat offender unit, and Sergeant Steve Austin as Gold Valor Award winners for bravery in the face of danger and a commitment to keeping our communities safe. I'm Sergeant Philip Chapin. I'm out of the Central Traffic Unit. I run the motor unit for Montgomery County Police. The day of the incident, I was actually in my cruiser. We have take-home cars here in the county, and I had just picked up my son from football practice. I was driving northbound 270 when I noticed that there was a bus that had a flat tire. I stopped my cruiser, and I actually blocked the, uh, the HOV lane, which is the left lane. The bus was actually on the left shoulder, and uh, so I went up to check on the occupants of the bus, and then at that point I realized that the back tire was on fire. When I first pulled up on the situation, I realized that the people on the bus couldn't get off because they were on the left shoulder, and the HOV lane was going by so close. The bus is so wide. They, were, they had the jersey wall on one side and then the white line from the, the lane. At first, I didn't realize the bus was on fire. But once I came in my car and, and opened up that lane for them to get off, I realized that they couldn't get off the bus. and, and, and Without that happening, without being able to, to close that lane down, they were going to be stuck on that bus. Either, you know, a car could possibly hit them or they were, you know, going to get caught up in that fire or smoke. They were trapped and, and, and not realizing when I first pulled up that it was even on fire, but then I realized they, they were trapped and, and thank goodness by chance I, I was driving through that day because they were trapped on the bus because traffic was very heavy that like usual on 270 but traffic was very heavy that day and the HIV lane was being used because it, it was during that time period and um, if, if they there was just no way I mean the door when that door opened up literally the people were stepping into the HIV lane I remember one of the occupants saying you saved our lives and it really didn't dawn on me that that's what was happening I just thought it was something I had to do that day I, it was something I saw and I just reacted Before a single-engine plane crashed into Gaithersburg power lines last November and made global news, it was a local crisis. It needed local responders. There were two injured people in the plane, hanging from a high-voltage tower 110 feet off the ground. The plane was leaking fuel. It was cold and rainy and dark. And the problem was even bigger. The plane caused a widespread power outage for half of all county residents, at one point impacting 120,000 Pepco customers. Recovery started on two fronts. At the crash scene, Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Services launched their technical rescue team, their hazardous material team, and initial responders. For the next couple of hours, they worked with Montgomery County Police, Maryland State Police, the Montgomery County Office of Emergency Management, the Montgomery County Department of Transportation, the FAA, PEPCO, Tower Subcontractor AUI Power, and the Montgomery County Air Park to secure the plane to the tower and rescue the injured pilot and passenger. Both were taken to the hospital, treated for their injuries, and released. Meanwhile, the County Emergency Operations Center opened to coordinate community needs with the power outage. Experts thought it could take days to restore power. Instead, PEPCO did so within six hours. For their multi-agency coordinated efforts, ability standing up to an unprecedented test, safe rescue of two citizens, and quick restoration of power for hundreds of thousands of people, the Chamber of Commerce is proud to award a unit citation to Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Services, Montgomery County Department of Police, Montgomery County Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security, and PEPCO.
Hi, I'm Michael Leonard, Mid-Atlantic Territory Vice President at Motorola Solutions. Motorola Solutions is proud to sponsor, once again, the Government Partner of the Year Award for the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce's 2023 Public Safety Awards. At Motorola, we are preparing to turn 95 years old later this year, and we are proud of our heritage and recognize that our partnership with Montgomery County and the State of Maryland helps inform our investments and guides our strategic direction. We often say that innovation is our legacy and our future. We have been partners with jurisdictions across Maryland for decades, and I can confidently say that our state is leading the way in innovative public safety technologies and solutions to help keep first responders and citizens of Maryland safe. We are honored to receive the Corporate Vital Link Award at last year's Public Safety Awards and are determined to maintain our reputation as an important partner for the public safety community. We work with public safety agencies like the Maryland State Police who collaborate and partner with local jurisdictions, including Montgomery County, and are committed to providing the best tools to law enforcement officers to help keep their communities safe. The Maryland First statewide communication system in partnership with Motorola allows for more seamless collaboration, communication, and coordination for first responders across the state of Maryland. For these reasons and more, I am proud to present the 2023 Government Partner of the Year Award to the Maryland State Police. Congratulations and thank you for all that you do to help keep Marylanders safe. Uh, my name is Captain Prendy V. Garcia. I am currently the Washington Metro Troop Commander. Our jurisdiction is the entire state of Maryland. We do basically the same type of work that law enforcement does in the county, uh, local police departments and so forth. However, we do it in a larger spectrum, which includes the entire state. The uh, relationship between uh, Rockville Barrack and the Montgomery County Police Department, in my opinion, is probably one of the best working relationships uh, in the state of Maryland. When we do get together and we collaborate, the biggest thing is that we bring each other resources resources that maybe we don't have and they do and vice versa. But the biggest thing is the uh, working relationship among the troopers and the Montgomery County police officers. That is so valuable for the citizens because that's a force multiplier when we go into an area and we're applying our workforce and our resources together. Working with the Montgomery County Police Department, uh, what we learned is that there was an increase of uh, crimes based on citizen complaints and other traffic stops and other data that we collected. And in doing so, uh, we've been able to collaborate with the Montgomery County Police Department and increase arrests, uh, seizures of handguns, uh, and to include drugs uh, in certain areas. Uh, we have a great working relationship with Motorola. I, I would say our radio are just as important as any other tool that we have in our two belt. This radio can save our lives. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal technology that is assisting us to be safer on the highways and provide a quick response for services needed with individuals are, are stuck on the highway, perhaps an accident or broken down. For the men and women here at Rockville, it's just an honor to be recognized. That's the real important thing. Um, they're constantly working hard, putting many, many man hours out there. And just for this recognition, it means so much to the morale. It means so much to the command staff. And it means so much to the Maryland State Police to be recognized and receiving this award. An important aspect to serving and protecting the citizens of Maryland is working in partnership with our local police agencies to make all communities safer. State troopers from our Rockville Barrack continue to assist the Montgomery County Police Department with various calls for service. Through increased traffic and DUI enforcement to the recovery of stolen vehicles, illegal guns, and drugs, we are making a positive impact within the Central Business District of Silver Spring. Public safety is the most important service government provides, and the Maryland State Police will continue to deploy crime-fighting efforts in support of our local police departments across this state. I am grateful for the recognition and proud to accept the 2023 Public Safety Award 
for Government Partner of the Year from the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Corporal Brian Rumsey. I work with Maryland Park Police. I was actually doing paperwork um, when a rec center identified a potential suspect entering their establishment. I got a lookout for a suspect that was hovering around the lockers and the type of vehicle he came in. At that point in time, I broadcasted that the individual started to leave the swim center and ask for patrol officers uh, to make a traffic stop. While en route towards 108, I saw the suspect's vehicle. Once again, it had been involved in an accident and he was fleeing from the vehicle with property in his hands. He came to a stop probably a quarter mile away and I approached and gave verbal commands that he's under arrest and further, let me see your hands, get on the ground with uh, no avail. Uh, as I got closer, the suspect, probably about eight feet away, produced a handgun, leveled it with my head, punched the weapon out straight at me and fired one round. Uh, so the weapon was less than six feet from my face when it was discharged. The suspect fled about five townhouses down from where we were and laid in wait with, dropped everything but the weapon and uh, was waiting for an officer to come around the corner, in my opinion. It was a long day. I just knew I needed to get there to assist how I could. Once we got on scene, I met with some of the park officers and I was getting my dog ready. So I had my dog sniff it for odor just to refresh his mind. Um, we start to track again, and then we push to the right. Once we got to the right is where I saw a very big behavior change in my dog. He made a sharp U-turn, basically, is what he did, and kind of followed the odor in the air and then came up to the fence line, and we call it bracketing, where he just sniffs back and forth under the fence line. So to me, that's an indication that there is human odor present back there. Suspect is there. At that point, he calls the suspect out. Go, go ahead, go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Watch He was taken out of the uh, backyard. We then found the gun uh, underneath the fence or the deck um, right in front of him within a couple feet of, of where he was. We all came home safe. Nobody was hurt. Nobody in the community was hurt. No officers were hurt. And we all... We all came home safe. He is phenomenal at what he does. His nose is amazing. And he is a loyal, a loyal dog that I feel saved all of us and saved and kept us safe that day. And I, I owe him a lot for that. I'm Deputy Clifford with the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. So in this incident, uh, I was actually very close to when the call was dispatched for Rockville City Police. So I responded to the area along with Rockville City Police and Montgomery County Police where we located the first victim. Upon initially arriving on scene, um, myself and several other Rockville City Police officers observed a, uh, our initial victim um, on the ground in front of the 7-Eleven parking lot. Um, and then several witnesses were you know, advising what had happened and that he had been stabbed. Um, there was a large amount of blood accumulated on his shirt and his pants. Um, so myself and other officers began rendering aid. And then the other officers um, spoke, with the uh, spoke with the witnesses and obtained like a uh, lookout and direction on travel for the suspect. Um, once the officers you know, obtained that, they would proceed and apprehend the suspect about two blocks away. Initially, we only had located the uh, one victim when we arrived on scene. However, when uh, Montgomery County Police Canine Unit and Rockville City Police Canine Unit were attempting to track to locate um, either the suspect or the weapon the suspect used, um, they did come across a victim who was in a parking lot in a car. He was unresponsive in a vehicle. Um, they ended up removing him from the vehicle to try and render medical aid. 
Um, unfortunately, uh, once we were asked to be wrapped on scene, they attempted to medical, render medical aid as well. However, he was pronounced uh, deceased on scene. In this case, the victim, um, once we removed his shirt, which was saturated with blood, we did locate uh, a single stab wound to the center of his chest. Um, so immediately applying pressure on that, and and he was transported to the hospital, um, where I believe he, you know, was uh, stabilized at the hospital after the work of the doctors, um, and then was able to speak with the detective. I'd just like to recognize every officer that was on scene that night, um, who did an excellent job as well. Um, I think every officer on scene did a great job, and that you know went a long way to apprehending the suspect within in a very short time from when the incident occurred, and hopefully giving the victims and their families some justice. My name is Officer Nathan Rogers. I'm assigned to 6th District Patrol currently. From what I remember, it was around 1 in the morning. I was just on routine patrol driving around uh, our district. I was driving up 270 northbound uh, in the area of Montgomery Village Avenue. And around that time, I originally noticed a plume of smoke coming off the shoulder of the highway. So I began to slow down a little bit. And as I got closer, I realized that there was a car um, off the roadway in the embankment. Um, so I immediately pulled over and stopped and then went to go check on the driver. I wasn't sure if it was occupied at first. Hey man, can you get out of the car? Hey man, it's Kyle Luis. Um, but then the engine started to rev and redline essentially, um, but the car was stuck in the embankment. So the tires were kind of spinning and the engine was overheating and smoking. Um, I tried to get the guy out. Well, I first tried to make communication, but when I first walked up to it, the driver, he was foaming at the mouth and he was conscious but he wasn't really responsive to anything. I can't hear you. Want my extinguisher? Uh, yeah, if you got one. I, 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 no, his foot was slamming on the gas. All right, hey, you all right, buddy? All right. He's out of it. So I go, uh, try to get him out of the car myself. I try to open the door and it only opens a few inches. It gets caught in the embankment. The embankment was kind of uh, in a V shape. Um, so I wasn't able to get the door fully open. So I try to get that open, try to get him to get himself out. As I mentioned, he was not really responsive. Um, thankfully, Sergeant Drew was on his way home, actually, from his evening shift coming up from Silver Spring. Uh, he happened to see me pull over with the car accident, and he stopped as well. And then we pretty much, he took over trying to get the guy out. I was calling out for fire rescue, and right when that happened, the engine block caught on fire, um, and then it caught the brush on fire underneath as well. Um, so thankfully, Sergeant Drew was able to break the glass to the window and pry the door open a little bit more. Um, I ran back to my cruiser and got the fire extinguisher and at least calmed the fire down a little bit while Sergeant Drew was able to pull the guy out of the car and get him a safe distance away from the vehicle. I'm proud of the award. Um, I think it's nice to get recognized for stuff. Officers here and all over the country, you know, do this kind of stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's always great to see, you know, good outcomes come from certain incidents, especially ones like this where it could have easily gone sideways and someone could have lost their life, but everyone was okay at, you know, at the time and we were able to make a good thing out of a very potential bad thing. Hello, I'm Dave Hargadon, Senior Vice President at TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. TD Bank has been a proud sponsor of the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce's Public Safety Awards year after year, and I'm truly honored to serve on the Public Safety Awards Committee with Montgomery County's Public Safety Chiefs and business leaders from the Chamber's Board of Directors. During our deliberations of Valor Award nominations, the Selection Committee reviews photos, videos, and body camera footage as the Public Safety Chiefs walk us through the courageous acts performed during dangerous incidents. Reviewing this footage helps to put things into perspective and gives us a clear view of what our public safety officers encounter during these incidents. It also shows the unexpectedly human side of these situations. For example, an officer calmly trying to help somebody wake up just in time to pull them out of a burning vehicle. Or a deputy sheriff saying good boy to their canine partner after locating a suspect. This body camera footage and the ability to store the footage is made possible by Axon an important partner with Montgomery County's public safety agencies. Body-worn cameras have been a critical technological advancement in policing, and this equipment benefits residents as well as the departments that utilize them. On behalf of the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce and the Public Safety Awards Selection Committee, I am pleased to present Axon, 
with the 2023 Corporate Vital Link Award. Congratulations and thank you for supporting the critical mission of our public safety agencies. Hi everybody. My name is Josh Isner and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Axon. On behalf of our nearly 3,000 employees, I'm so grateful to accept the 2023 Public Safety Award. And I'd like to sincerely thank Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce, as well as TD Bank for putting on such a great event and allowing Axon to be a small part of it. At Axon, one of the pillars of our mission is to protect truth. And we do so by deploying body cameras and digital evidence management solutions to different police departments and sheriff's offices around the U.S. in an effort to drive mutual accountability and transparency in public safety. And the program in Montgomery County dates back years and years, and I was actually the first sales rep to partner with the county on deploying the first ever body-worn camera program. Scott Roth and his team have been tremendous partners over the years, and I'm so happy to see all of the great results that Montgomery County Police Department has driven. Now, while it's an honor uh, to, and a privilege to support uh, the PD, uh, all of the credit for this award goes to the users at the county, putting their lives on the line every day to keep their communities safe. And we're just humbled by the fact that our tools can play a small part in that mission. So thank you very much again. And of course, every day we will be focusing on how we can keep communities even safer and making sure we do not let our customers fail and we're there to support them in every way, shape and form. So thank you very, very much. We look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thanks. It definitely was not uh, a normal day um, and uh, a very unique call. The call was originally announced as a high-rise uh, building fire, apartment fire. And we can see from uh, from even Brookville Road that it appeared that half the building was gone and on fire. The sheer amount of fire that we could see coming down the road was very, okay, this is real. This, this, this place exploded. To see a call like that on the board to be real, to be legit, was like, all right, well, today's the day we're, we're going to work. Chaos, panic. There are people that were I mean, freaking out, but rightfully so. Okay, where do we start? We have people in there somewhere. That side of the building is pretty much gone. Let's just make that stairwell and see if anybody's in these other apartments. And we both just moved in. You know, while we were in this stairwell, the stairwell was, was moving on us. It, it was swaying, it, it rumbled. Uh, I could remember uh, hearing floors collapsing just on the other side of the wall while we were going door to door. For me, from my perspective, the entire right side from the stairwell right, the entire building was on fire and it was starting to collapse. Um, so I, I had to manage getting the truck set up to get the aerial up and then also trying to get a water source because I knew that eventually we were gonna have to start putting water on this building from the elevated platform. We arrived on scene uh, to people rushing out of the building. And at that point, we worked with the tower crew to hold the fire in check and extinguish fire inside the building while they made rescues. Basically, while we would be inside of a stairwell, we were holding the fire in check on one side while they searched apartments on the left side. Stepping off the ladder truck, 100 feet away from the building, 50 feet away from the building, maybe you could just feel the heat on your face. Got into the stairwell, uh, there was some exterior stairs that went up, and then each landing had a door. Getting through those doors one by one as we ascended the floors, every time you, you went through one, it was like, okay, what components are here, what is not? There was floor burn away, there was doors that led to nothing where the apartments were just gone. Uh, and over our heads, when we got to the top floor, it like a jet edge, like you said, it was just fire roaring over our heads, roaring. Uh, it was spectacular, I guess is the word for it, uh, and very overwhelming. Uh, just kind of had to break it down in our heads and say, all right, we need to make these two apartments, get in here, if they don't find anybody, get to the next floor, get into those two apartments. If we find anybody, get them to the window. I think it was the third floor that we got into one of the, one of the apartments, and there was a lady in there that 
had no way out. There was no way she was going to make it down the stairwell, and that's when we made it to that uh, that window, got it open, and signaled to Bill that we needed we needed that truck bucket to the window soon, as quick as possible. And uh, from there, it was muscle memory takes over, and job done. This is what we do every day. Um, I think the crew being recognized as a crew makes it more fulfilling than just one of us being decorated or recognized. Um, we did a lot of hard work that day. Um, it was a very emotional day. It was a long day and it's nice to be able to make it to the scene and actually make a difference in somebody's life. Even with those type of incidences, um, I think it was instinctual in that we knew what we had to do and there was no question. It, we had to go into the building and we had to search and we had to get people out. I mean, it, it just, I guess second nature that, that that's just what needed to happen. I feel like I just, we just did our job. We did what we were supposed to do. My name is Trevin Sherrard. I'm a sergeant with the Maryland National Capitol Park Police. And my number one program that's near and dear to my heart is the D.A.R.E. program, Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It's been around for many, many years. I know the Montgomery County Division of Park Police haven't had it around in quite some time. So when I joined this division uh, roughly a year or so ago, I was able to bring this program to this division. The D.A.R.E. program is near and dear to my heart because we live in a society now where our youth are, some are going astray. And with the D.A.R.E. program, it, it teaches youth about making safe and responsible decisions. And um, so we go into the classrooms, we teach that it is a D.A.R.E. decision-making model. And the interesting thing about this D.A.R.E. decision-making model is that not only can youth apply it to their lives as children, but they can apply it to their lives even as they uh, become teenagers and adults. So I believe that that program is very beneficial because it teaches them to think about their actions and think about the consequences of their actions before making decisions. And I believe that's what we need more of in today's society. I love my job. I find it very rewarding to be able to come to work and say, it's not my job to lock people up. It's my job to keep people out of jail. Well, how do you do that? Through positive interactions, through programming. Because if we provide positive programming for our youth and even our young adults, give them something positive and constructive to do, that'll ultimately keep them away from crime. To be selected, uh, nominated and selected as a recipient of this award is very humbling. So now to be able to come to work, do what I love to do and receive an award for it, that's, that's pretty awesome. My name is Stanley Sherman Sutton Jr. So that day started where I was, uh, I drive a truck for Giant Food. I'm a tractor trailer driver. That's my full-time profession. And then I had come home to uh, get ready for a meeting and then my pager went off. I was alerted by text of a house fire not too far from my resident. Um, by the time I got in the car, turned around the corner, there was radio traffic, so I didn't say much that I was even responding. And then as I got a little closer and turned the corner, I could see the column of smoke. And then I could see two, uh, two ladies standing in the front yard. One was on the cell phone and one was waving, trying, you know, getting my attention. I uh, pulled up next to them and they said she went back in the house. So at that point, I gave a quick on-scene report, um, advised communications what I was looking at. And I made the announcement there is report of one track. And I went and got my um, helmet, coat, radios. And I started across the street towards the house Got to the door uh, and I couldn't see nothing except smoke, but I could hear her screaming, which at the end of the day, I believe it was her a dog she was screaming for. And as I went towards her voice, I basically ran right into her, I grabbed her and I went straight back to where I came out of, took her to the command post. But the scary part of the whole event was what happened after that. Firefighters were at the front door getting ready to make entry and it either flashed and a ball of fire engulfed these firefighters. Um, Seeing them there for a second and not seeing them, but nothing but fire, was pretty uh, scary to think that I had just come through and out of that room with her. So if another minute, 
maybe less than a minute, it could have been a very different outcome for probably both of us, or uh, of course her uh, not being able to exit the room. So it's a pretty challenging event. Uh, I've been told there's going to be times in your t in your in your uh, position in the fire service you will be challenged, and of course at this time was one of those challenging points. But training um, your senses. Uh, what you do and the um, the outcome was positive, so it does have a rewarding effect. Uh, something I can pass on my experience to other younger firefighters of my situation and how things developed. My name is Dave McBain. I'm a commander of the third district for Montgomery County Police Department. Many years ago, I think it was about. 2014 where I was a, a sergeant uh, in the motor squad in Bethesda in our second district and uh, I took over that year uh, kind of coordinating our efforts with uh, NIH Children's Inn for the Santa Ride. The Santa Ride uh, originated many years ago and um, but basically um, uh, motor officers from all over the county uh, would come together um, and we would ride all over the county with one of our officers dressed up as Santa Claus and that was of course Bobby Ladaney. Um, and uh, uh, the, the whole purpose of that was to raise awareness of what Children's Inn was all about. Um, these are motor officers that generally, uh, every, every other day of the year, they're out writing tickets or they're on traffic posts and doing traffic safety uh, things throughout the county. And this is a day where we tell them to kind of let their guard down, relax a little bit. And we start at the 5th District Station and we basically ride all through the county. Um, and it's, it's just a time that we can enjoy. We have fun doing it. Uh, we make our way into all six districts and then we end our evening at the inn, uh, usually at 4.30, 5 o'clock at night. And that's really where um, uh, these guys and, and our one, one female motor officer, but um, they kind of let their guard down when they go into the inn and interact with the children. Uh, you know, the typical um, uh, idea of a, of a motor officer is kind of like a grumpy guy, you know, and and uh, and really what's what's amazing is is it seems like the grumpier the guy, the softer he is when he gets into the inn. And so over the years, we've really seen uh, just some really fun stories uh, to to see pictures that that these kids, uh, you know, sitting on these officers' laps or kind of hanging out with the officers. You know, I've always said that um, that this ride and, and these motor officers I mean it just it just speaks to community engagement right this is um, these these are kids um, from we, we, we've probably seen from every different state in this country but more importantly even around the world different different backgrounds uh, and it's just um, it's it's a it's an honor that it's being recognized because it, it, it is what community engagement is all about. You know, we're a part of this community, and uh, and the kids at the at the Children's Inn um, are are just uh, in need of just being lifted up. And and I think that uh, these guys, um, when we see their smiles, I think it, it's just uh, it, it 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 hits home, and it and it makes us feel real good about what we're doing. Hello, I'm Steve Robbins, Chair of the Public Safety Awards Selection Committee. As the committee deliberates over the course of weeks and sometimes months, we have lively conversations about award nominees, sometimes going back and forth about award levels and whether one organization should win an award over another. In the case of our 2023 Public Safety Champion of the Year, this nominee was a no-brainer. Jen Lin, founder of Empowering Autism Caregivers, has a great story, and her work supports the family of people with autism as well as the public safety community in teaching them ways to communicate during these interactions. On behalf of the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce and the Public Safety Awards Selection Committee, I am honored to present Jen Lin with this year's Public Safety Champion of the Year Award. Thank you, Jen, for all that you do to enrich the lives of all members of our community. Everyone is gonna know someone with autism. I have a son with invisible disabilities, multiple, um, 
Invisible disabilities um, run along the lines of uh, people with autism diagnoses, people with mental health diagnoses. A lot of times those are together. 80% um, of folks with autism also have comorbid um, mental health diagnoses, and nobody knows. You can see them walking down the street. You can see us. Who knows if I have one, right? So those are the things I kind of tie into my trainings and try to teach everybody to be a little bit slower, a little bit more patient, a little more understanding if you're not getting the response within seconds that you normally would typically have. I work with the Maryland Center for School Safety as a trainer. In that regard, we train um, school security officers, um, school resource officers, anyone that works in the school with children. I also, through the um, Autism, IDD, and Dementia Unit with Lori Reyes at MCPD, so I was able to train a much larger audience and get our message out because the population of folks with autism is only growing. Primarily right now is focus for law enforcement and emergency response, fire rescue. Because so many of our folks with autism are highly intelligent and they're very capable of working in these very um, you know, government type jobs. But really for them to be successful, you want to position them and set them up for success as much as you can. Everyone is going to know someone with autism. And thankfully, law enforcement here in Montgomery County and actually in the state of Maryland, they're very, very um, attuned to this. I mean, I've trained at the academies all over the place, and they want this training. They're hungry for it. When I learned that I was even nominated for this, I, I started crying. <laughs> it's been a joy uh, for me because I'm learning their side of things as well, and, and I'm honored that they think of me as a partner. Thank you to the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce, the Montgomery County Police Department, and the Public Safety Awards Selection Committee for recognizing me as this year's Public Safety Champion of the Year. I am truly honored and humbled by this award. As the parent of a young man with autism, I've stumbled into this line of advocacy and public safety work almost accidentally. We teach the police, we care deeply for our police family, and we continue to learn from each other. I am so happy to accept the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce Public Safety Champion of the Year Award for 2023. Thank you once again to the selection committee, the award sponsors, and the greater public safety community. The incident happened on the 25th of December, which happens to be Christmas Day. So I resumed to work, you know, check on everybody, make sure everybody is doing very good. So, but... I was being suspicious of the guy, like, you know, the particular resident. It looked, something is way off about him. So I pay a lot of attention to him because the unit is a special management unit. So you got to pay a lot of attention, unlike the general population. We were informed that an inmate was self-harming himself. Um, he was hitting his head off of the toilet in the sink there. It's kind of like a steel material and had multiple abrasions on his head and about his head. So well, I was there by the door. This guy was inside the cell. So the next thing I saw, he went on his knee, then straight he banged his head on the sink. So when that happened right there, I'm like, uh oh. Then I gave him directive, stop doing that, stop hurting yourself. So I was in a resource room at the time, and this is about a couple minutes later after the first, first emergency call went out. So then I heard on the radio, we have a medical emergency. I went straight to medical. I saw um, a sergeant and Corporal Page, uh, they were form forming CPR. So I was there to assist if anyone needed um, help with CPR. And then from that point, um, our nurse came in and was able to check his pulse and he responded, he had a pulse. So from there, he was revived and we just from that point, we just basically waited for EMS to arrive to take them out. I'm not just here to enforce rules or enforce laws. I'm here to make sure they're safe. So they, they know that if need be, someone is here to, you know, take care of you if it's needed. Everyone here, we're going to try to make sure they leave here the same way they came in. That's the number one rule. That's my number one rule. Leave, leave exactly the way you came in. Winning the award, you know, it means that somebody see that, okay, we are also, you know, doing one thing, we are saving life. So it means a lot to me. Hello, I'm Scott Royal, President and CEO of Westat, one of Montgomery County's largest employers. 
Westat is a 100% employee-owned professional services firm providing research and analysis support to federal, state, and local government agencies, as well as businesses and nonprofit organizations. Our mission at Westat is to improve lives through research. By way of its research corridor, Montgomery County makes biotech, pharmaceutical, and research companies like Westat feel welcome. And through its public safety agencies, Montgomery County allows our staff to feel secure and supported. Westat is located in Montgomery County's third council district, which is represented by council member Sidney Katz. We at Westat are grateful for council member Katz's representation, leadership, and service to our community. He embodies the type of leadership we have come to expect in Montgomery County. He goes above and beyond his duties as a council member, as his life of service can attest. Recently, I served on an economic advisory council with Sydney, and I was impressed by how quickly he rolled up his sleeves and dug into the most pressing issues impacting our business community. I personally have experienced his dynamic commitment to businesses and people here in Montgomery County. He really cares about all of us. In addition to his leadership on these issues, he has also chaired the County Council's Public Safety Committee, where he has demonstrated his tremendous ability to work collaboratively with county residents and the county's public safety agencies on concerns related to accountability, domestic violence, mental health, and many other issues. For his dedication to serving our community and his tireless efforts to support our public safety agencies, I am proud to announce the winner of the inaugural Public Safety Advocate of the Year Award, Montgomery County Council Member Sydney Katz. Congratulations, Sydney. The Public Safety Committee deals with first responders, uh, fire and rescue, we uh, police. It's very necessary to have a good relationship with the various chiefs uh, of the various agencies, but it's also an extremely important to have a good relationship with the public in general. Uh, we want to we want to hear the, you know, it's the old story, the good and the bad, and, and uh, thank goodness we have very little bad, but you want to hear when there's an error that has been made and, and, and how we can correct it. And for too long, Montgomery County, we're, we're down police officers, and for too long, air what I call air competition, it's good competition, but air competition from various uh, other places uh, have been offering a signing bonus, and we did not, Montgomery County did not. And I'm someone that says, if you want to have the very best police officers, and we do, and as I say, we have a very fine police department, if we want to continue that tradition, we have to be able to be competitive. So we're announcing that we are going to be offering a $20,000 signing bonus. We'll be at the, the top of the, the list or equal to the top of the list for people that they can make that good decision. We're always very concerned about safety. And public safety is one of those departments, one of those areas that it's not just police. It's also dealing with the health and human services, the mental health parts of it. It's also dealing with the with uh, Montgomery County Public Schools and the safety of our children. And we need to make certain that all are blending together, that there is a that there is a comfort level from all departments working together so that so that we can have the best life we can possibly have and the safest life we can possibly have in Montgomery County. You know, it, at times it looks like this could be an easy type of situation, and at times it is. But it, there are times that it's not, and you have to you have to figure out how in the world are we going to get this puzzle to fit together. But it does mean that you have good, honest, transparent um, discussions to figure out what best path forward. It is an honor to be presented with the Advocate of the Year Award by the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce. This award is very meaningful to me as a longtime public servant who knows that public safety is the cornerstone of what makes our county a desirable place to live, work, and do business. As chair of the County Council's Public Safety Committee, I have been working closely with all of our departments in building strong relationships and ensuring paths forward that meet the needs of our residents and business community. 
As previous mayor of Gaithersburg, I know this work must include our municipal partners as well. Our county needs all of our services working together in a coordinated and collaborative manner. The Public Safety Awards is a time-honored tradition recognizing our devoted and courageous police officers, firefighters, emergency medical personnel, community advocates, and others who have dedicated themselves to the public welfare of our community and prioritizing our safety. I thank each and every one of you for your dedication, sacrifices, and all that you do for our county and our residents each and every day to keep us safe and protected. I also want to thank the Chamber's Public Safety Committee for this award and to Westat for their sponsorship. It truly is an honor to be recognized by the Chamber. James P. Seavey began serving his community when he was barely old enough to drive. Jim was just a 16-year-old student at Walt Whitman High School when he began to volunteer at the Glen Echo Volunteer Fire Department in 1976. For more than four decades, he would rise through the ranks to eventually become Cabin John Park Volunteer Chief, as well as a captain with the DC Fire and EMS Department, always ready to answer the next call, always with a commitment to service. That service protected the highest levels of our nation's leaders. For many years during his career firefighting tenure, Jim Seavey was an officer of DC Engine 16, known as the Midnight Express Unit, where the White House sits in the first due assignment area. It was just the beginning of Chief Seavey's contributions. He played music with the DC Emerald Society Pipes and Drums, served as the State of Maryland representative on the board of the National Volunteer Fire Council, and helped DC Fire and EMS and PEPCO's Emergency Partnership Program team up for firefighter safety. PEPCO established an award in his name to recognize people who've gone above and beyond the call of duty to be proactive about safety. Chief C.V. died in 2018 from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, believed to be a result of years of working with toxic chemicals involved in firefighting. This year, his name will be added to the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial, recognizing a line of duty death. And his legacy continues. Recently, the International Association of Fire Chiefs published a report Chief C.V. researched and co-authored about best practices for preventing firefighter cancer. The report lists 11 actions that can reduce cancer cases caused by the risks of fighting fires. You can imagine all the lives still to be changed as a result of his dedication. We are grateful for a lifetime of service and proud to honor Chief C.V. with the Chief Leslie B. Thompson Public Service Award. Hello, I'm Ruben Bajaj, CEO of White Star Investments, a real estate investment and management firm here in Montgomery County. Feeling safe in one's community is critical and helps guide the decision-making process of businesses and individuals when looking for a home. In addition to my role at White Star, I have the honor and privilege of being a volunteer firefighter and emergency medical technician in our county. I've seen firsthand the risks our first responders are willing to take putting their lives on the line daily to keep our communities safe. These public safety awards show just a glimpse of these heroes, and each of them will tell you they don't run into harm's way for the accolades. They do it because it's second nature to them, whether they are on or off duty. I'd like us to take a moment to pause and honor those first responders who have made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of the greater good. Hello, I'm Gigi Godwin, President and CEO of the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for viewing our 49th Annual Public Safety Awards. Please join me in thanking Marcine Goodlow for a half century of dedication to celebrating our first responders. A big thank you to Steve Robbins, Managing Partner of Lurch, Early and Brewer, Chair of the Public Safety Awards Selection Committee, 
and past chair of the Chamber's Board of Directors for nearly a quarter century of leading this ceremony, which highlights acts of valor. Steve famously told an audience of over a thousand business leaders to find your passion outside of work. Thank you, Steve, for chairing this event with such passion. Thank you to our Board of Directors and our sponsors for providing the time, talent, and treasure to support nearly 50 years of the Chamber's Public Safety Awards. And most importantly, thank you to our first responders for running into burning buildings, protecting our community, and serving as a national model for how public safety agencies can work together on critical missions. Thank you once again for joining us as we honor our public safety heroes.